to N5D Radio's Cosmic Awakening Show, where we are serving this galaxy and beyond. My name is Michelle Walling, and I'm a holistic life coach, radio show host, webmaster, and writer. My purpose here on Earth is to reach as many people as possible with a database of articles, videos, and radio shows that will help aid in your spiritual awakening. And at the Cosmic Awakening Show, we encourage you to question everything. You can check out all of my work on CosmicStarseeds.com, which is a database of my information. And you can find out more about booking a session with me on my website, MichelleWalling.com. HowToExitTheMatrix.com is a website that I created in order to uncover the true nature of our reality. And WooWooMedia.com is a no-holds-barred platform for everything paranormal, supernatural, and metaphysical. I'm also the creator of the StarChildren.net, which is a database of articles and videos that support star children and their parents. And all of these links can be found in the info section down below of this YouTube video. So I have some exciting announcements for N5D events. The first one is March 18th of 2017. We will have our N5D Lifting the Cosmic Veil Conference in Seattle, Washington. So all of you in the Seattle, Portland, uh, North California, uh, Vancouver area, be sure and come down to see us. We still have some vendor tables available for that event. And uh, you can find out everything you need to know at n5devents.com. I will be speaking there uh, along with Kewani and Kelly Lapsuritis, and they're going to be talking about the Sasquatch. My good friend from Norway, whom I met in Finland, is coming, Emma Louise Living Soul. I just can't wait to meet up with her again. And, of course, we have the wonderful Brad Johnson. And then, of course, Eric Rains, who is my guest tonight on the show, will be speaking at that conference. So, we, you know, when you get together with uh, like-minded people at events like this, there's this um, this thing that the starseeds have called coherence after they've worked and cleared themselves and uh, when we get around other people that uh, need that coherence, they can't help but have their vibration raised and uh, get some healing. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. Um, Brad's going to be tra- channeling Adronis, which is his higher self being from Sirius. And it's just going to be pretty much out of this world. It's going to be wonderful. So um, we also carry, um, Starseeds carry cosmic, cosmic codes from their star systems, as well as the attendees carry their codes. And so we can all give each other these codes and get activations. And um, it's just a lot of fun. So we sure hope to see you at the Seattle, Washington uh, conference coming up very soon. Now, we also have a conference in Austin, Texas called 5D and Beyond. It's a crystal workshop and conference. And it's on March 25th, the very next weekend, from Seattle. Now, Greg Prescott from N5D will be there. Myself, we have Londa Curtis. She's coming all the way from California to share wellness and yoga secrets. We have Candace Crawl goldman who is going to be bringing through a message uh, from Dolores Cannon about the new earth and about the times we're in. We have Kelly Coffey. She's up from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. She was a speaker at our conference last year as well as Candace was. And uh, Kelly's going to be just basically channeling her higher self and just doing some healing and uh, things that I think we're just going to have a lot of fun. The way she puts it is she doesn't know what's going to come out of her mouth. (laughs) And I like that because she's just living in the moment. And then uh, my very favorite crystal expert, Adrian Goff, is going to be headlining our event And she always has a plethora of things to say about what crystals are good for the energies of this time. Um, So I hope that you can join us in Austin, Texas for that conference. The third one I want to to let everybody know about is the N5D Starseed Reunion. And that's May 28th in London, England. And I'm so pleased to be bringing these people to you in London. Um, I had a very successful and fun meetup last year in London, and this is going to be a little bit bigger. We even have vendor space and everything for all of our conferences. Uh, Austin is almost sold out on the vendor space, but um, we do have some in London and in Seattle left. Um, Candace Grawl-Goldman from N5D Radio 
is actually going to be in London at that time and joining us, and I'm so thrilled that that worked out. Now, we have one of my very favorite people, David Manning, who I met in London last year, and we have grown close in, in this relationship of um, this meditation that David does and this healing with his sound, his voice that he does and these uh, conference calls that he gives. And I want to share him with you guys. He's absolutely amazing. My very favorite starseed on the planet, I think, besides Greg and, the, of course, the many people in my daily lives that I really look to for advice uh, is Magenta Pixie. And so I'm so happy to announce Magenta will be at uh, headlining our conference and she uh, channels the White Winged Collective Consciousness of Nine, which is actually more of, you know, just like anyone else that channels um, actually uh, accurate material that really resonates with others. Uh, it's actually a part of our higher self. So um, that one's going to be a wonderful event and the date is May 28th. You can find out about vendor spots and about purchasing tickets at n5devents.com. Now, without any further ado, let's talk about my guest tonight. I had another show with Eric Rains, uh, I think about a year ago. And um, we talked about uh, implants, implant removals. What we're also going to talk about is the energy body. And he's an energy healer besides just an implant removal, remover. And he um, has much to share with us. And after an intense energetic activation in 2012, Eric Rains became aware of the implantation and parasitic construct in a very real way. His subsequent search for answers about this experience led him on a journey to self-discovery. Now, this discovery, coupled with more and more real-world practice, allowed him to gain a deep understanding of how this other system works, how to identify the interferences and constructs, and how to promote self-protection through daily practices, and most importantly, how to remove these false constructs from himself as well as others. Eric is constantly expanding his repertoire of tools, and he currently implements a wide range of energetic tools ranging from parasite and implant removal, meridian clearing and balancing, crystalline organ rejuvenation, theta healing, soul fragment retrieval, remote lymphatic work, and golden light energy work. And he also utilizes physical based practices such as quantum pause breathing, reverse breathing, self lymphatic massage, cycle stretching, Qigong and meditation. So with that being said, Eric Rains, welcome back to the Cosmic Awakening Show. Thank you for having me, Michelle. Well, you're quite welcome. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person at our Seattle conference. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. There's uh, quite a few really interesting people and amazing personalities. I can't wait to meet there. Well, and you just got back from a trip to Mount Shasta as well. And is, you know, tell me about what it felt like to actually be in the same, you know, room with all these high vibrational people that are excited to be there that want to know information and know something exciting is upon us right now what is it what did it feel like to be with like-minded people well it was actually really interesting um there there were two conferences this summer that i went to uh or last summer that i went to in shasta and it was very interesting because right now with the way the energy frequency is rising on the planet, we're literally seeing a schism right down the middle. The darkness is splitting from the light and we're watching people become much more service to others and loving and more generous, benevolent and kind. And we're watching people become much more dark and service to self and selfish. And it's really interesting because you could see this actually happening at these conferences. There were amazing beautiful 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 points of light in here and there was also some incredible darkness and it literally just kind of separated itself and it is amazing to watch what's coming from that right now because the activations and the genuine love and compassion and the wanting the freedom of humanity from a lot of these people who are in this energetically vibrant area they are literally changing the world right now they're going out and rippling everywhere and massive things are coming down the pike because of some of these conferences and places like this you know and you know I, I'm not saying Shasta is the reason for a lot of this stuff it's people like-minded with everybody in Shasta who are here for the liberation of this planet who meet together all around the world and it wasn't just Shasta that was just the event that I was involved with and that was my 
little um, participation right there, but people around the world are getting together and it's causing the dark to go insane. I mean, look at the world right now. It is absolutely crazy with what's happening and we're seeing so much beauty and so much darkness and it's getting to the point to where we have to face it we have to deal with this and that's what we're looking at right now and shasta was just like a little microcosmic version of what i'm seeing the world going through right now and it's uh it's a humbling perspective well first of all i said just got back from but it was last summer so that's my problem with time perception (laughs) yeah it just seems like you got back from that but holy cow it's been like you know five months um, yeah. The second thing is, is that um, Shasta is known for that. Shasta, mm. when you go to Shasta, you go to see your darkness so that you can transmute it and to get through any blocks that you had. The so Shasta will definitely do that to you. And there are some light, there are some positive vortexes there, and there's some mm-hmm. very, very negative vortexes there. There's also a, a, you know, entrance to the huge military underground base where they have a lot of. Uh, kind of dark things going on. Um, it's, it's funny, Greg and I, uh, when we were talking about Shasta, we'd never gone together, but, uh, I stayed at the KOA at the base of the mountain and uh, I had the best uh, cell phone reception I've had almost anywhere. And it's like, well, why do you think that is? Well, it's because there's underground bases there (laughs) and they need excellent self, they need excellent cell service there. So that's pretty funny. But, um, we definitely put a huge, um, protection bubble around our conferences and, and we we don't allow people uh, to come into our conferences and join our energy if they're not in the best interest for all involved for the you know we try to say for the light but sometimes there are best interests of the dark to really push someone else to uh, wake up even further to what they need but we we pretty much try to reserve it for the light beings only so um, that's really important in this day yeah, and age. It is. it is because, you know, that's what people forget to do. But we're very responsible co-creators here. And um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fabulous, fabulous to have uh, the, the lineup that we have together. But uh, let's if we could, let's just give uh, the listeners. We had a, a show back in September of 2015 uh, where you were just starting um, or had or were just being public about your implant removal process. And you are a psychic, you're a seer, you're an intuitive, you uh, can travel outside of the body and see new timelines. You basically, you're all over the place with what you can do. But could you just give us a brief summary of how you came into your your abilities and how you knew what direction to take them and what you are currently doing? Well, long story short, I was uh, put into martial arts when I was five years old, and I practiced my whole entire life, and it really kind of gave me a centering and an awareness of the body. And um, it was kind of interesting for me to recognize that people didn't really have this awareness that I did of where their body is and what it can do as I was growing up. And that difference right there, it really gave me an understanding of things that happened inside of me. I was really paying attention to it. And I was always moving energy around. I really didn't understand what I was doing, but um, it all kind of clicked and came together later on once I understood. But long story short, I was forced into a a dark night of the soul in uh, 2012. It was actually the date of December 21st, 2012. That was the the day that I lost hope, and I was forced into uh, a really dark downward spiral where there was no way for me to get out except for me to help myself. And it was... That's what I realized down in the the bottom of that pit was that the only way out was for me to turn on the light. And so I did. And I started really looking for things that were positive in life. Um, I completely and totally dropped everything. I ended up in massage school. I started doing Reiki. I started doing some a lot more uh, taking care of myself. I was eating clean. I was doing meditational practices, yoga, kundalini, yoga, um, Uh, moving energy around and it all kind of just culminated to a massive energetic activation and it was uh, February 18th, the night of February 18th I believe of uh, 2014 Um, and that night I had an explosion of activation inside of my heart space that it uh, blew like this weird black spot inside my temple. That's the only way I could really describe it at that point in time. But it clicked it 
and it started moving it backwards inside of my head. And so I'm dealing with this explosion of energy inside of me that, like, honestly, I really needed to focus to hold on to it because it was so much that I felt like if I wasn't able to channel it and contain it, it was going to burn me out. And so I had this focus that I had to go on right here with this sliding sensation in my head. But the crazy thing was the more that it slid backwards inside of my head, the more disturbed, demonic, loud, and insane the voice, my own internal voice, got inside my head. And the pain level as it moved from that originating spot back to the back of my skull grew from intensity of literally within five seconds of a zero all the way to a blinding migraine. And that was when I recognized at this point in time there was something that was inside of my head and it was talking in my voice and it was not me. And I <laughs> took, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not too nice of a, a realization, especially when you're holding on to what, bef okay, so beforehand I could do energy work and it felt real and I could sense things, but it was never really anything tactile. This right here felt like it was burning me up inside. It was literally eliminating any type of toxicity inside my body and I had heat that was a bubble about three feet around my chest that was 35 40 degrees hotter than the ambient temperature so I'd never experienced anything like this and now I've got a demon screaming in my head so I mean I'm like okay well what do I do here and so I was intuitively guided to start taking this energy that was exploding in my chest and start pushing against this darkness that was in my head and I ended up pushing against it and the pain started to kind of go numb and the voice got a little bit more muted and I pushed it harder and harder and harder and I couldn't get it out. And so I ended up taking my hands and like energetically reaching in and clamping around this thing and trying to pull it out of my head. It took almost three hours that first time. So was that and a so disembodied entity that had possibly joined you when you were a child or something? I honestly don't know where that one came from. Was that your ego? Was that your old... No, that... That was actually a very specific uh, device. It's called a, uh, a, a what I call the chatterbox or the monkey okay. mind. It sits okay. inside of the gallbladder meridian, and that starts on the outside corner of the eye and goes through the right. temple. And it literally sinks into your thoughts. And not like sink as a boat, but like sink as sink up the information. Wow. And so it sinks up to your thought frequency, and then it starts replicating it. And so you end up having a duplicate of your own voice talking That's inside your head. Gosh. And so what it does is then it starts nonstop talking. And so what you end up with is this constant chattering, this never able to be silent inside your head. So whenever you try to actually make your head quiet, within two or three seconds, you've already got 50 things that have ran through your mind. That's not natural. This is what I figured out this night. You can literally remove this energy. And it's the thing that the thing is that they're inside of a frequency that we can't see. The visible light spectrum that we see is only about 5% of the entire light spectrum. And they exist outside side of that so our eyes can't perceive it but they're inside of uh, dimensions and scalar fields and plasma fields that are so close to the human body they can directly interact with it the thing is that they are uh, I, exactly what you would call a disembodied entity and so they're a higher dimensional negative negatively oriented entity that it's inside of your head and it's talking and chattering for what seems like no reason you, you think to yourself. Well, there's a huge reason behind this, and this isn't the only one. As soon as I pulled this out of my temple, I recognized there were multiple dark spots inside my body just like that one in my head. And so I started pulling them out, and I didn't know what to do with them then. I was just kind of like blasting them with energy, and they were just kind of dissolving and disintegrating. Um, I got rid of everything in my body, and I felt fantastic. The chronic pain, the tightness, the tension that was inside of my shoulders, it was completely and totally gone. I didn't feel anything whatsoever. There was a sensation of pressure that had been crushing down on top of me that I didn't even recognize was there that all of a sudden was gone. I felt lighter. I literally felt like I lost 15 or 20 pounds. But as I went to go weigh myself, I weighed the exact same. I literally felt the lightness of the energy flowing through me. I felt um, energy flow. So in Reiki, what they uh, taught me was you have a receiving hand and a giving hand. So you receive with the left and you give with the right. And I had never, ever been able to actually flow energy down my left arm whatsoever. 
What I realize now is that receiving, what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to anything that's got a dark negative connotation and that you're allowing it a straight shot up your arm to your heart space and it shuts down the entire flow through the meridians in that left arm and you can't flow chi, you can't flow energy out the arms. And so, I mean, there's multiple things that happen and so as I was discovering all of this, one question led to another, led to another, led to another and it's like, why? What is happening here? What is going on? Why can I take these? out of people and they feel so much better what is the point of all of this and that's when I ran into uh, Cameron Day's work actually you can find him at ascensionhelpblogspot.com uh, Cameron Day is absolutely fantastic I love the man I've never actually met him and I can't wait to meet this guy but if it was not for him I would have been blundering around in the dark for uh, easily years more than I was his information was the only stuff that I came across on the internet at that time that described my sensations and he was able to give me some tools like connecting to uh, the central sun, connecting into source and being able to actually vacuum up the entities, vacuum up the parasites, things that were very valuable to me that if I did not have these tools, I probably would have been majorly attacked and not been able to do anything about it, you know, and not be able to decode this information and actually be able to share it. And more importantly, teach people how to do this to themselves. And so I came across his information and that's when it all it all hit. The reason that the parasitic construct is here is because these entities, these higher dimensional entities, have completely and totally separated themselves off from source. Now, there's uh, a bunch of different stories about how that happened. Uh, it might have been a Logos that was too immature to uh, actually become a Logos who did it immaturely and ended up creating the Archons as... Uh, a spawn that was not connected into uh, the rest of source consciousness. There's other, uh, like Cobra talks about the prime anomaly and uh, higher dimensional angels, uh, angelic beings, when they came into contact with it, it immediately reversed their polarity. And so they were separated immediately from source. And that's what they talk about in the Bible with uh, the falling and uh, the angels that were cast down to earth. It wasn't that they were cast down directly to the earth plane itself into physical reality, but they were cast out of the higher dimensions and they had to exist inside of the physical scope and it's um, the dimensional fabrics and layers that exist around it. So I don't know how that actually happened. That all kind of hits for me. I think it's a combination of a few things. I think there's multiple ways that this all came into being because there's multiple types of systems that exist. But I digress. So when <clears throat> these beings were created, what happened was they were incredibly weak. They were parasites. They were energetic fleas or ticks, you could call them. And the humans living on the planet at the time when they first or were originally introduced were what we would consider uh, god, godlike creatures. You know, like the, the myths about Zeus and uh, uh, Athena and uh, the Roman gods and all these different god type archetypes that these cultures have throughout history this is what we would consider these people walking around they weren't just legends they were actual people but it was a lot longer than we think it was it wasn't just you know uh, Greek history you know five six thousand years ago we're talking tens if not hundreds of thousands of years and so what happened is these entities were able to through pride and hubris actually have one of the um, highest decorated society members, I guess you could say, for his achievements in science, consciousness, philosophy, and energy work, tapping into powers that you aren't supposed to be able to access here in the physical reality. And through the pride of being able to change his people's way of life for the most drastically positive uh, timeline that could be imagined, they started tapping into stuff that they should have been left, left alone. And what happened was there was a planetary disaster and we can look back through, uh, like uh, the Bible tells us, the flood. Uh, we have the deluge. We have, you know, all kinds of different. Uh, the tale of Gilgamesh, massive planetary floods. And what happened was they kind of popped the planet, and there was a massive shock wave that wrapped around it. And this is where we end up hearing about uh, uh, the sinking of Atlantis. Um, and stuff like that. And apparently there was a lot more than just one Atlantis, but this is the most recent one that happened. And so I don't care how in touch or multidimensional you are with understanding of the law of attraction and the connection to the universe. If you watch 99.999% of your population die, all your friends and family die in a gruesome, horrible way around you, it's going to cause a massive planetary scar, a backlash, a traumatic happening that was absolutely a feeding frenzy for these negative vibrational creatures that feed off of lower vibrational emotions that are not connected into source. And so they became very strong. They became uh, 
in control and they were able to shut down the DNA of the uh, human body. And so we were not able to access the higher dimensional realms that our DNA is uh, innately connected into. And so we could not see these things. And so they disappeared into the the annals of history and uh, the shut down humans through generation upon generation upon generation of controlled trauma, controlled uh, direction of the societal construct, uh, Babylonian slave money magic. You know, all of this led up to the situation where we're in right now to where we are stuck inside this matrix mentality of we need to work. We need to uh, go to the nine to five so that we could pay our bills so we could keep food, water and shelter here in our existence instead of having to, you know, be homeless and be hungry and starve to death and not have clean water. You know, that's one of the things that we're stuck in here. And so we start seeing the things that get us that, such as power, such as control, such as money, uh, influence and things like that as a means to an end. And so that then becomes the priority. And so the whole societal program is literally directed towards keeping us away from these esoteric subjects. And they literally eliminated the people who had this knowledge. You look back in history, the Nag Hammadi and the Gnostic texts, these people knew exactly what was going on and they had tools and techniques to actually keep this virus from infecting the body itself. And this is what we're starting to re rediscover to this day. And so all this research that was going on, you know, this is kind of the background to all of this that kind of led up to where we're at right now. And so in the beginning of all of this, I did not really see this, this stuff. I only felt it and it felt very dark. It felt very constrictive and it had a very malevolent consciousness and the longer I progressed and the more I actually learned how the human body works and the way the energy is actually supposed to flow inside of the body the more I was able to unlock so the human body has been shut down systematically not just through the DNA but through energetic constriction and ties that are in the flow and literal I guess you could say manipulation of physical organs that are supposed to have an energetic connection and so we end up with people who uh you know they hear about all these amazing things that people are doing with their third eyes all this remote viewing and astral travel and these amazing meditations and visualizations and then they go and try it and you know five six times they're only seeing blackness they're only seeing walls and they can't really do it and they just you know well i guess that's not my gift everybody has their own gift that's completely and totally fabricated. Everybody has the ability to do this. It's just that we've been shut down physically through, you know, the system systematic poisoning of the environment. Uh, you know, we've got chemtrails, vaccines, fluoride in the water. We've got GMO food. We've got glyphosate everywhere. You know, we've got the body being attacked from multiple levels. And then we have, if not as much even more coming from the etheric side. We have so much going on. We've got a planetary wide net that completely shuts us down from accessing planetary consciousness. We are supposed to be able to, through the electric universe and the connections between the stars, be able to telepathically communicate. There is not supposed to be any separation whatsoever. And yet here we are in, in a complete and totally unique quarantine you know we can see stuff in the sky we know stuff's out there yet we have not had full contact and that's because we are stuck in the midst of a prison planet it is a farm humanity thinks it's free we think we're the apex predator of the planet and that everything is laid out for us to dominate and this is not the case uh this is the completely and totally fabricated but we don't don't know it so we think we're completely and totally free and that is where the illusion steps in. And this is why the atrocity that we see in the world is so prevalent. You know, why do we have endless war? Why do we have this nonstop attack against the people themselves? Why do people have to, in Africa, travel eight miles a day for a clean glass of water? Why are children dying right now of starvation? We've had the technology since the 70s to create food, water, and shelter as a right of existence instead of something that we have to fight for. And we are stuck here in the system that is so completely backwards, so completely wrong. Why? Why is it like this? Why do we perpetuate the system? It's because we are being guided by internal impulses, internal thoughts, emotions that lead us along this. And it's only the people who fight against their own internal programming, who fight against the systematic programming of the whole entire culture around us, who start to wake up and recognize that, hey, this is wrong. It's an internal understanding that this is so completely against the natural way that it hurts. It truly does. And we don't really even realize this until we've been indoctrinated into the system and are forced into that awakening. And so these are the systems that we've been figuring out here. And not hey. just that. 
Oh, go I'm ahead. I'm going to have to interrupt for just for just a moment because I, I totally agree with everything that you say. I write about this stuff. I post about this stuff, but I just want to get keep on track here and just ask uh, get back to a couple of things. First thing is um, I do I do have an interview with Cameron Day. Um, it's on his website actually. It's on uh, my YouTube channel as well. He's he's got some wonderful information. Um, what made you, what do you think the reason was that your higher being, more of your energy came into your body um, at that time? Do you think that you came here as a star seed to have this higher self walk in so that you could see these things for, your, for yourself and begin to uh, start your role as a implant remover and disembodied entity and energy remover i mean let's we were getting we were starting uh, on your role and how you came to be <laughs> yeah i, I kind of did get on a roll there didn't i yeah um, that's yeah. okay because you just spout out the whole pretty much history in about 10 minutes of everything that's happening which is really mm -hmm. cool i've never heard anybody do it that fast and that concise so that well was awesome. it's it's a lot of information and you know that's kind of what I have to do is that's what I do is I compile the information and I put it forward in the most simplistic easy to understand way possible because we're talking about stuff that literally doesn't have words you know there's no words to describe these sensations or these constructs we have to make them up as we go and explain what we're doing as we're doing it so I've had a lot of practice at it you know and I can fit as much information into the amount of time as I need and so it's kind of what I've had to force myself to do because I can talk for hours. You know, there's so much information I can talk that for days. You and yeah. I can talk for days. So oh do you yeah. Think you had a higher self walk in at that time. Um, that, that heat, that energy, that when you know that so the explosion I, in your chest. So I'll just explain the sensations that I felt as I was going through this. So this all was about a six or a seven month cul culmination okay. of. Um, walking meditations, yoga, uh, sun gazing, um, energetic practices, and just, you know, constantly moving forward and trying to become better and more aware. So, I mean, it wasn't just uh, an activation that happened one night. I was actively trying to remove the color systems from my chakra centers and open up the gold energy so that I, it was all completely integrated. Oh, we've got to talk about that. What do you mean remove the color systems? Do you think okay. all the chakras are... <laughs> Uh, implants, or do you think that uh, the color system is the is the fragmentation? So um, I I don't are you know if about individually each color. Or are you talking about merging all the colors into white light? <laughs> all <laughs> right. So let let me. Okay, I, I'm gonna have to get a lot of information <laughs> into a little bit of time here. So when we take a beam of sunlight and we break it apart with a prism we can see the red orange yellow green blue indigo violet spectrum but we can also measure the other light that comes off of the sunlight and we have to use different types of uh sensing equipment because our eyes can't see it we can only see the visible spectrum Go uh the sunlight is a beautiful golden shade of white it is a fantastically bright integrative system that has everything in it so a beam of sunlight has the whole entire spectrum it has the infrared the x-ray the gamma ray the microwave everything that we use in uh, inside of our society right now for like our cell phones and our uh, microwaves and like our communications technology and the gps it already has that and that's only a tiny tiny sliver it completely and totally integrates everything and so the first time I ever heard about chakra removal which honestly I wish it was never given that name because it exactly. immediately it, it gave me an immediate revulsion like that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard right. of those are endocrine systems in the body if you remove those you're going to die and so I completely and totally disregarded it but for about six or seven months it was just kind of eating at me. It was always in the back of my head. So I started doing research on it and I came across an article that uh, I believe it was in Indigo Adults, I think is the website, but it was called The Secret of the Chakras. And the way it explained it was just like I explained the beam of light right there, how it's completely and totally integrative and yet the 5% that we're stuck in is slit into seven different pieces. And so that 5% is cut into seven different slices and that's what that frequency is so each different color spectrum is only about maybe one one point two percent of the entirety of the energy that you can access right. and so when they said that I was like oh ding 
that makes so much sense. Okay, right. okay. I this is this isn't chakra removal. This is integration, integration into the whole entire frequency, not keeping yourself limited into tiny slivers. Right. And so that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to completely and totally clear out the color and so I ended up having a progression. I had a crystalline structures in my body where the energy centers were that they didn't have a color. I could turn them any color I wanted. And so I would be doing meditations to where I would go into the red of the root and I would turn all of them red. And then I would go into the, the orange of the sacrum and I would turn all of them orange. And the, the yellow of the solar plexus and all of them yellow and so on and so forth. And so I was able to switch and blink back and forth. And so each energetic center wasn't limited to just that one frequency that it was stuck in. And so that was kind of the process that I was going through. And that activation that happened, what I was doing is I was um, doing an energetic activational meditation to where I was visualizing the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet spectrum inside of my body, buoyant, kind of floating on a sea of golden white light. And the integration was all of a sudden the colors just they were gone. They were inside and integrated into the hole, and then the hole exploded out of my chest. So and is so, that the same thing as activating your Merkaba? Uh, no, I've never really resonated with uh, the hard lines and the, the angles of the Merkaba. All my mm -hmm. stuff is more soft and uh, flowing and more okay. circular. Uh, but I do know that it's a, it's a legitimate form of energy work. There's some people who absolutely love the masculine form of the uh, the Merkaba and the, the angular way that they use the energy. I personally don't feel that way. Uh, I'm a lot stronger with the more feminine aspect of the energy, more soft and flowing. Okay, but, um, beautiful. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the thing is that it works, you know, and it might not work for some people, but it works for other people. And so you can't say, well, no, that's disinfo. You can't do that because it doesn't work for me. You're a different person. You're a different, you have a different type of body. And so, you know, some person might be allergic to something that you're not. That does that mean that just because they're human, they should be able to eat it just like you? No. You know, it's, it's a different way that the body reacts. And so everything is, it's all interpretive and it ha it's all about how does it feel for you because what might be true for you might not be true for somebody else because their systems don't work that way. So it's all about the integration, the, the unity in the so community. So are you saying there's two ways to pretty much do um, energy oh, there's, work? I mean, there's, as far there's as probably yourself, millions. you could do there, the Merkaba or you could integrate, oh, yeah. softly oh, integrate yeah. all your colors. Oh yeah, well, there, there's probably millions, and you know I personally probably a higher way. I mean, the highest and best way, though. Well, you know what we're looking for right there is like the root of the language. You know, like <laughs> yeah. where, where does all the language come from? What is the language that we can speak that everybody will understand, no matter what language they they're they're talking? You know, and that's kind of what I've been looking for, and that's why I'm always looking for new people and new modalities and different things that I've never come into contact for with before because the more you integrate outwards and stop staying inside your bubble and what you know, the more you can integrate outwards because there are very legitimate modalities that you've never even heard of, that you've never experienced before. And so by keeping yourself walled off in your bubble and saying, no, this is what this, this is, you're not allowing yourself to experience it. But not only that, you're giving yourself to really exercise your discernment because there's stuff out there that is disinfo. There's stuff that's very legitimate and is incredibly powerful but there's also stuff that will lead you down the wrong pathway and it'll get you kind of mired up into a whole system of snags that you're going to have to break free from before you can keep moving on you know so it allows you to exercise what you want to do but the biggest key is all about what you feel for yourself is this true does this feel good for me is this powerful in my acceptance of this energy right here immediately you will get a yes or a no. It's all about how you interpret it. You know, if you start getting just kind of a standoffish feeling or a weird vibe about something, that might be interference going on. You want to explore it. You want to go look at the information. You never want to see something and immediately run away from it. You want to go and explore it and see how it pertains to you and whether or not it's disinformation. You have to explore these things because what happens is you get a bigger picture. You include the whole. And so you have so many more perspectives looking from the outside in that you don't have to just get stuck in well this is this and this is that because in an infinite universe where we're all creator gods anything is possible and who's to say what's wrong or right right and on your website um, called unleashing natural humanity.com you had uh, published an article called etheric implants and entities are quote human nature unquote and I republished mm -hmm. uh, part one part of part one of that 
on my website, howtoexitthematrix.com. And basically where we're going with all this is that pretty much everyone who is unawakened and hasn't done any energy clearing or any energy work is walking around with this fractured chakra system, these ch some of them chatterbox implants in their brain, um, basically some implants that um, disconnect you from the earth below your feet, that chakra uh, is completely blocked off to where you're not even grounding with earth. Um, we have uh, disembodied entities, which are beings um, where people, when they die, um, they either have unfulfilled nature, unfulfilled wishes, or they just really like the earth experience, or they're very fearful of going to the light uh, from, from some fear of God judging them that they want to stay on the earth. And so um, what they do is they jump into people. So you've got people walking around with disembodied entity attachments. And the longer they're in there, the deep, more deep rooted they're allowed to go in and just really um, give you like a multiple personality disorder type thing. So you're seeing this as human nature. I mean, that human, that this version of human, when we fell from the time of Atlantis and we were basically cut off from from remembering who we were. First of all, our memories were wiped, and then our DNA was uh, kind of um, dis um, disraveled. Uh, it's there, but it's not all connected. Um, all that happened so that we could be uh, farmed for energy, and basically, this whole reality was taken over. Yep, that's it in a nutshell, right there. Okay. So now we're waking up to some people having the psychic abilities to be able to see these things, seeing that, you know, all of humanity is infected. And yeah. so we each got to go through uh, getting help from each other and getting these implants removed, uh, into doing meditation, guided meditations, perhaps integrating the, the chakra system uh, into uh, golden white light. Um, is it an opening? Do you open when you said that? You went into the base in the red, and you, you made everything in that area red. That's basically opening, it seems like to me. But when so, you're opening all of them at once makes this big white tube inside of you. Well, it was kind it's of a hyper-awareness. So, like, when I talk about hyper-awareness, one of the things that really stands out for me the most was the book Dune when I was a kid. Uh, they talked about meditations to where Paul Atreides, he would sit for hours without moving a single muscle except for... Uh, you know, like the tiniest fascia on the back of his finger, or he would take his awareness into one of his fingernails to the point to where he could feel the blood flowing b underneath the actual um, fingernail oh, that's itself. That you know? I know a lot of people just they don't they haven't gotten mm -hmm. that far, including myself. <laughs> well, you know so, that right you were there. It meant to do that. Well, it really stuck out to me. So as yeah. a kid, I was practicing that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that kind of led up to this. So I do like okay. a hyper-awareness focus to where I put my consciousness incredibly intensely into one spot. But, you know, just by focusing on that area, what the, the easiest way I know how to describe this is the consciousness is not stuck inside the head. You can take this anywhere. Yes. So yes. I would drop my consciousness down all the way into my pelvis so that if I were to open my eyes, it would be like I was looking out with my hips to either side of me underneath my belly button. And then I would move up into the sacral area and be up above the pelvis, you know, all the way up into the heart. Like the heart, I would look out and it would be like I was feeling myself in between my shoulders looking through my chest, you know. And so that was kind of what it was happening right there. And then I would feel the intensity of the vibration of the color and I would just feel it. And I would feel it very intensely until I was like, well, I'm familiar with this. Let's move on to the next one. And so I did that all the way up. And then I opened all of them like that. I focused on all of them. And then I put them on the background of the gold white light. And then the the command was like integrate, release. Okay, and it just, you. it was it was an integration. The, the color just dissolved Perfect. right into the gold and the gold replaced it. Okay, so... <clears throat> And, and you also took care of those dark spots. Okay, so let's say somebody, you know, we, we're awake, we want to clear ourselves, we want to get our, we want to do, let's just say somebody, like, will come to you, though, and they need an implant removal because, you know, maybe they're being attacked by the, um, you know, a device, like, a, like what my friend, Greg Mara, who's about to have a show with Greg Prescott and myself and you, um, about what he calls you know, everybody's got their own verbiage. He calls them alien torture devices. And yeah. Like, for instance, I had one that's like a cantilever thing 
that would swing up and stab me in my lower back when I was when I wasn't in the high high vibration. Like let's the two times it happened that I can remember what I was doing when it happened was I was in I was in frustration. Mm -hmm. I was making bent over making a bed, you know, like I do all the time. But I was pissed because I was having to make this bed up for my son, and it my back went just it hit me and it went. It's, it's like it's like you slip a disc. It hurts so bad. Second yeah. time, I was literally trying to get out of a parking space, and somebody had parked too close, and my door wouldn't open up, and and I was having to twist a funny way to get out, and it hit me then too. So it's almost like it has intelligence, and they're watching, and they know when oh, yeah. you open yourself up for it. When you're vibrating high, and you're always um, in love and light, and you're always you know uh, in service and doing things, it's like they don't. Um, they don't do it then. I don't know if they're not allowed to do it then or if it doesn't work or what. But anyway, but long story short is we're all trying to get ourselves cleared so that we can be in service and so that we it's you know we can help people uh, help each other to get cleared, <laughs> right? So yeah. um, <clears throat> so you were saying um, on your on your website that um, Implant removal and energy clearing, it won't fix you, but it will allow you, allow you to clean the slate so that you can have a better energy field. And it, it allows you to do that um, traveling through your consciousness, through your body, you to be more aware um, in the future of how you pick things up, how it feels, what kind of state of mind you are in when you pick these up. So implant removals right now are, are really a hot thing for that purpose. Um, and I guess the main question is, of course, you can get another implant put in after you get a removal. But once you learn how to um, be more aware of yourself and, and scan your own body, you can remove them yourself. So let's talk a little bit about that. Definitely. This is uh, this is the bread and butter right here. This is the major reason why I am here for humanity compiling this information because I have a very analytical type of a mind. Uh, with uh, the, the body aspect, I am, have a very in-depth knowledge of it. And so that type of cataloging and the ability to see what I'm seeing is what allows me to bring these all into words right here and actually give techniques for specific things that you can do yourself to keep yourself clear and keep yourself from actually experiencing these. So. Um, one of the ones that people notice more often than anything is the chatter brain. Their heads always are talking and it's almost impossible to ever get it quiet. The devices for these are always inside of the temples and the gallbladder meridian that they're inside of, it starts on the outside corner of the eyes and then it goes through this weird zigzagging pathway through the temple and then all the way down through the body into the feet. These right here will get clogged up. And so what we can do is by putting our hands to the outside corners of our eyes, we can literally start to breathe energy into our bodies and push through that temple and start to clear that out. Now, when I say breathe energy through the body, what I'm talking about is there's a very specific thing that we're doing here. And this is uh, the ancient Chinese were actually where I learned this information from through the art of Qigong. Um, the... Ancient Chinese understood the multidimensionality and the holographic nature of reality. And they didn't have any electronic equipment at, like we do to investigate this. What they did was investigate the science of the mind. And through the using the, the qi flow in the meridian body and understanding the way the energy is actually supposed to be empowering the body, they figured all this stuff out and they recognized that the base construct of the reality around us, the physical reality, is chi. It is energy. It is crystallized energy given form and it's held in form by a vibration. And you know, you can call that vibration whatever you want the source field, uh, uh, source energy creation, God. It doesn't matter. That is what is holding this reality together. And everything is energy at its base. And that being said, the soul is not part of the physical reality. And so they recognize that the soul is the vital life force essence. This does not need any type of recharging. This is a, an eternal free energy device, I guess you could say. Uh, the body, however, isn't. It's part of the holographic universe. And 
it needs sustenance. It needs to bring in chi of its own in any form in order to sustain itself. And there's three different major types of chi that we actually ingest. There's food, there's water, and there's air. Now, of the three, air is the most powerful because if we cut ourselves off from this form of chi for more than five minutes, the body starts to die. And so what we're doing as we're breathing in this gaseous form of oxygen is we're breathing in an incredibly light form of of matter. It is still matter, but it is chi at the base. So as you're breathing in, recognizing this is the key. And so the thing the the sensation is as you take a big, deep, relaxing breath in, it's almost like you're breathing in golden liquid or golden sunlight. And you can start moving this energy through your body and you can breathe anywhere in the body. You can breathe all the way down into the big toe if you want. So the sensation would be an inhale down through the throat, through the chest, all the way down through the leg and into the toe. And then you want to hold it for maybe two or three seconds and let the energy swirl around and then you breathe out anything dark, anything that you don't want anymore. And so this is what I talk about when I'm talking about clearing the body or um, conscious breathing or breathing energy into the body. Mm -hmm. And so... By breathing in this chi, breathing in this energy, and then exhaling and pushing it out through your arms, through your fingers, up through this pathway in the gallbladder, you can either dislodge this or push it out of the way completely. What will happen is your mind will either start to completely and totally shut down or it will race incredibly loudly, incredibly quickly, and you'll start getting this weird panicked, anxious type of sensation. And what's happening is you're starting to push on it and it hasn't been dislodged and it's reacting because now you're actually pushing on it where it's been nestled comfortably for however long. And so... By using this gold energy inside your body and moving it around and you can do things along the lines of like uh, push energy blasts into people, into yourself, into places, you know, uh, just light up golden chi in front of you, breathing in life and you'll feel like these tingling warm sensations as you're doing this. And it's just as simple as focusing on the areas where the symptom hits and there's multiple different types of infestation that have multiple different types of symptoms and so that's kind of the thing that I'm cataloging and putting together like if you're noticing this type of sensation this is where you need to look energetically this is where you need to breathe energy through and check out what's happening and you know so we have all these different types of things that are happening here but the most important one that I teach people is how to move energy through your body and shield yourself so the way this one works is you take a big deep breath into the center of the skull, right into the pineal, and you focus on creating a little tiny piece of the sun. Uh, it's almost like there's a, a little tiny atom of the sunlight that's right inside your skull, and you just focus on making this little tiny point as bright as you can make it. Once you feel like you've gotten to that point, you start expanding this out by breathing into it, almost like you're filling up a balloon. And it fills up the inside of your head with this golden orb. And what you want to do is click this loose and let it drop down through the central channel all the way into the root. And what you're going to do is turn this into a pair of golden pants. So on the exhale, you push the energy out to surround your legs all the way down to the feet. And it's like you just put on a golden pair of pants. And you repeat this process, creating this energy in the head, and then you drop it down to about where the belly button is, and you create the bottom of a shirt on the exhale. You push the energy out of your body. And so now you've got a pair of golden pants that go up to about the, uh, the, the bra line in women. And so you do the same exact thing. You bring it down into the chest, and you push it out to create the top of a shirt. Uh, and so you've got kind of a golden jumpsuit on, and then the last one that you do, you start the light inside your head and create the orb and push it out to create a helmet. So what you've done is you've created like this little skin-tight astronaut golden suit. That's your uh, little barrier on the inside. And then what we do after that is we create the same exact construct, but this time in the heart space. The heart space is always more... Uh, powerful in the energy that it can actually exude outside of the body. I always try to do the logical thinking energy inside of the head for things that are inside of the body, and I try to use the heart for anything that's outside. And so what you do is you build this golden orb inside yourself, and then you push it out with an exhalation to create an egg around you. And you can make as many of these as you want. If you feel like it's weak, you can bring in walls of light to, you know, reinforce it. You can do whatever you want, whatever feels comfortable with this. You know, this is a very basic way to move the energy around but this practice right here once or twice a day you're putting up your shield you're energetically reinforcing yourself with the intention of you are not going to 
get to me. This is my barrier. You're not coming through. And you'll actually notice if something starts to push its way through because you'll notice the shield all of a sudden will have a hole in it. And, you know, you'll get like a weird sensation, a pain, a pressure, a strange thought, impulse or emotion. You know, one of those types of things. And then you can recognize where it's coming through pull it out, send it to source, clean up the area, and move on about your day. And so what happens when we start recognizing that the energetic need for hygiene is imperative, we start recognizing what natural humanity is. Natural humanity is very kind, very benevolent, very loving. It's not service to self. It's not selfish. It's not always looking out for its own interest. It's not looking out for number one. Humanity is a very, very positive benevolent species and there are multiple things that are completely and totally systematically implanted inside of us that we think are normal that cause much of the behavior that we see in this world today so when you remove these systems you start moving about the world in a much different perspective you're um first off you you feel much lighter uh there's no heaviness there's not the weight of the world on your shoulders you don't have constant non-stop talking inside your head nagging thoughts i have to do this i have to do that what about this bill that bill oh i don't have enough hours at work you don't have these you know kicks in the gut with like this emotional insecurity you know people with like heavy infestations in the solar plexus they have like body image issues self-esteem issues you know mm -hmm. Things along I those that, lines. That's though. like the majority of people. Yeah, it's most also people. also reinforced through television and movies. Oh, yeah. You know, we're constantly getting told what we're supposed to look like and how good we are not. You know, and so that's one of the major reasons why we end up having this infestation. And especially women. Oh, my God, you poor women. You just get <laughs> hammered from every single angle. You're not beautiful enough. You need this to be pretty. You know, you're not noticed unless you're pretty. You know, I mean, it's absolutely horrible. And so you end up with these absolutely beautiful young women growing up thinking they are just the worst thing on the planet with this horrible infestation inside of them. You know, and this is where we end up with videos of that poor kid who killed herself on the Facebook, you you know, live streamed it, you know, like it, you get to a point to where the energetic constriction and goading and urging, all you do is spew darkness. And when you remove these systems, all of a sudden you don't have something clipping your wings. You, do, you don't have something, say for instance, that you're a shrub, that a gardener, as soon as you start growing any leaves or any branches, it walks over and starts clipping. And all you are is a nub that's sticking up out of the ground. You'll never grow, never ever, ever, ever. You're constantly having something coming over there and taking your ability to grow and be strong. And so when you remove these, you start to grow. You start to recognize as your energy spreads out and connects into different parts of your body, it's like, oh my gosh, I can feel what that person is thinking right now. I just caught that in a flash. I've never felt that before. Oh my goodness, this person over here, feel that darkness around them. There is a major connection here. Let me look into this darkness. Let me see what I can see here. You know, and you start connecting into your body. You start activating the DNA because the DNA is multidimensional. And despite the fact that it shut down, the template for the true DNA, the way it's supposed to be is still there and the body knows how to get there that's why we've been shut down to be able to see we haven't been shut down to be able to access these energies because what would be the point they wouldn't have food we need to be able to access this stuff just not be able to sense it and that's okay, what we're doing it's making that bridge let me say that uh, if someone wants to learn more about how to do these different techniques they can schedule a session with you um, oh. We'll also have to have a whole nother radio show and we are going to have a forum on this uh, with other people who do implant removals as well and can see energy. I can't wait. That's so going to that be so we fun. Can, we're going to expand this out. We want to get this information out to as many people as possible. Let's talk a second about this DNA activation. <clears throat> what, is, what is the best way people can activate I mean, it's it's activate, but it's more like bringing the little synopsis together and connecting them. And it it only happens when you when you, in my opinion, when you um, when you spiritually grow and you say to the universe, OK, I'm ready to serve. You know, I'm ready to clear myself. I'm doing the work. I'm doing energy work. I'm doing everything I can to move forward. Your DNA starts to um reform and your abilities began to get stronger and you began to see the reason they were shut down is because they were being misused the information mm -hmm. 
the power, the information with crystals and all of our abilities were being misused. And so it had to be shut down. So it will only activate on people who have the best interest in mind for the, for the abilities. So what's the best way somebody can activate their DNA? So definitely what you were talking about right there. The more we move energy through the body, the more the body actually responds and recognizes that, hey, I need to buffer. I need to allow uh, a conduit that allows more energy flow, more channeling of source consciousness through this center right here. Um, that That's definitely a major, major way to do that. Affirmations by saying, listen, I am tired of being shut down. I don't want to be this anymore. I want to go back to what I know I am. And by putting that intention out there and speaking to your body directly, you're making a huge connection right there. That is missing the framework to the communication though. So this is the one that I figured out and I believe it was actually a cryon channeling that I heard that really sparked this information and got me to start exploring it. And he calls it something called the innate. The innate is the knowing inside the body that understands everything. Um, like when we pendulum douse or when we muscle test, things along those lines, that's a way to bypass the conscious thinking brain and going straight to the subconscious, that DNA memory storage, that that connection to the multidimensional energy that is needed for them to eat off of us. It's bypassing all of that thinking consciousness and going straight to that. So we can, you know, through things like pendulum dowsing and muscle testing and things along those lines, get yes and no specific responses along those lines to any question that we want. So the way I figured all of this out when, uh, because it was before I heard that channeling actually. So the progression of this is I was working as a massage therapist for an applied kinesiologist, a uh, chiropractor. And the way that these applied kinesiologists actually fix the body, it's, it's fantastic and amazing. I've never seen anything like it, and it blew me away, and it changed my whole entire perspective. They muscle test, and it's as simple as getting a yes or no response, either a weak or a strong response from a muscle while directing intention into specific parts of the body. So if he puts you on his table, he's going to put your arm up in the air, and he's going to push down on it with you resisting. And he's going to put his hand over different spots of your body body until he gets a strong response. When he gets the strong response, he's going to go in and ask the body, well, what's the matter? And so the body, he'll ask it, well, are you anteriorly rotated? Are you, you know, flexed? What's going on here? And so he'll get the adjustment that the body wants to be put back into place. He'll do it and then he'll test you again and the muscle will come up strong. There will be no weakness. So that was really amazing for me. But what really blew my mind was when he was telling me that he was muscle testing for somebody on the other side of the country for uh, uh, supplements for them. <laughs> I said, wait, 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 wait. How, how are you doing this and how does this work? And um, it, he, he's a really good guy. He's, uh, I believe he's Mormon. Um, and he's one of the nicest people I've ever met, but he does not really look further into the energetic connection of things. And... He says, you know what, Eric, honestly, I really don't know. I know that the good Lord put us here and gave us some amazing abilities, and it's our job to spread them and be as good as we possibly can be on this planet while we're here. And I said, you know what, fair enough, fair yeah, enough. you can't argue and, with that. Yep, yeah, and so I said, you can leave it there. I cannot. I have to look into this. <laughs> I have to understand what is happening here. And so there went a period of about maybe six or seven months where I didn't make a single decision without muscle testing at first. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point to where I didn't have to muscle test. I could ask a question and I could immediately feel the positive or the negative response. And so what was happening is I was awakening my body's ability to detect this and then communicate that information to me. And so the muscle testing, that was a bridge. That was a bridge it's to a allow tool. that connection right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so once I made that connection, I didn't need that tool anymore. It was there. And so I, I call it uh, truth sense or LIDAR. You know, I can feel the mm -hmm. positive. I can feel the truth and I can feel the negative as very complete, distinct sensations. The truth is very solid. It's almost like a... Um, it feels like uh, a, a, you just a, know. It's just a knowing. It's, it's a knowing. it's a bedrock understanding. the The falsehood feels hollow. It's almost like there's a construct that it's a balloon. There's nothing in it, you know, and it's it's like hot and cold on my hands. And so this connection right here allowed me to actually start. Like, hey, my body is communicating with me. And so when I heard that channeling with Cryon, where he says, "You can't ignore the body. You are not the body." 
you are in the body and the body has its own DNA consciousness. You have to make a connection with it like I'm sitting here talking to mm-hmm. you. You've got to sit down and talk to the body like you are me and you right now. Mm-hmm. And am I going to sit there and say the same thing over and over and over to you again like you would with a mantra that you're sp- repeating a thousand times, you know? No, you don't do that. The body got it after the first time. Yeah. The body wants to know more. But more importantly, the body wants you to listen when it's speaking back to you because it does not speak in English. It speaks in sensation. It speaks in image. It speaks in emotion. And it's the, like, whenever you feel a beautiful piece of music just lift in your soul and, you know, you get the goosebumps that rise up your spine all the way down into your hands and just, it's a beautiful sensation. That's your body telling you, listen, you feel this? This is why you're here. This is the magic. This is the exploration, the understanding, the the understanding the creation as the creator individually. You know, that that's the the resonation, you know, that's your body speaking to you. Follow those. The more you listen to what your body is speaking, the more it talks back. But more importantly, the more it activates dormant DNA. Because the body will not activate this unless you go in there and say, Hey, I want to do this. But you can't talk to it in English. What you want is, this is what I want to do. This is the sensation, the emotion, the feeling of what I want. And the body's like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this. And it activates it. And that's what this is all about right here. So you've got your activations with the the affirmation, putting your intention out there. That's on a multidimensional level right here. This is bedrock. This is base. This is physical. This is Bridging that communication between spirit and body because the body is not the soul. The body is not the consciousness, but it has this amazing storehouse of information that can access any information that you need inside the universe, anywhere, anytime, anywhere, everywhere. And that is what this connection is. This is what we're seeing people starting to turn on is this connection between the conscious mind and the knowing body because the belly brain, the, the, the intestines, you know, when we look at a baby being formed in utero, we see the neuronal tissue splitting into three different parts. The part of it becomes the heart, part becomes the brain, part becomes the intestines. And so we can operate with the conscious side with the, the ball up top, but the coil underneath, you know, the coil inside the human Tesla coil <laughs> you know, it's literally neuronal tissue that's coiled inside of our stomachs that this is the unconscious belly brain. This is the knowing. This is the gut response. This is what we've been cut off from accessing. This is one of the major things that the DNA was shut off to allow communication from because if we were able to freely communicate between the body and the mind and the soul and the consciousness, we would not be in this situation right now. There would be no way they could imprison us because we would have so much information from everywhere that it would be impossible to shut us down. And uh, it's, it's incredibly important. You have to take time for the body. You know, Let it know that you love it. Drink clean water, get rid of the fluoride, you know, eat clean food, go stretch, exercise, feel good. Let your body know that you love it and it'll let you know that it loves you too. And I think it's important to be grounded in the body Mm -hmm. and be grounded with earth in order to communicate with your body. Many of us are so um, shocked out of the body. We're fragmented when when, uh, emotional things happen, parts of you kind of pop out of your body. And you've really got to grab all those fragments of yourself and of your emotional energy that's been, um, you know, that's jumped out of you and ground it back in and and be in nature um, to be grounded enough to communicate with your body. Yeah. Important part. Well, you know, the thing is, despite whether or not you came here as a volunteer or you were trapped here and you're a prisoner, There's no way out other than within, you know, and we came here to have a physical experience. The physical experience is what teaches us the the constructs of duality and how to transcend that. And so by not staying inside of the body, you're missing a vital lesson. There's so many people who don't have body awareness or understanding of the way that they actually flow inside of themselves, you know, and this is one of the major sources of information that needs to be spread because the body can teach you, you don't need a guru. You need a connection to yourself. That's it. Exactly. Okay, let's get to the next very important point that I've written down here. Once we start activating our DNA, uh, once we do like what I've been doing, connecting with my higher self and bringing more of that energy into the body, grounding it into the earth, 
we start shining this light and this alarm system goes off in this arconic matrix Mm -hmm. and we began to they began to send the cavalry to try to shut us down and a lot of us learned the hard way as we were doing a lot of this work alone and didn't really have anybody to talk to about it um we began to you know we've all had our (laughs) we've all had our attacks and we've all um had to Fend that, fend that off and get back grounded again, get back into our body. I, uh, I call on my angelic team to help me out, but sometimes that is just not good enough if you are having a mind attack where you really don't believe that you have a posse out there because you're depressed, you're, you're hurting. If you're hurting, it's so hard to get back into center and get grounded mm-hmm. and talk to your body and heal your, let your body heal itself with commands or with you know love because you're just you're just got this vicious cycle going on so you know we can that's when we learned you know finally we've learned to connect with each other help each other do clearings and tell uh basically tell the other person's body you can take care of this you know let's get this done but tell tell me how we can um how you would suggest that we can fend off any kind of attacks and protect ourselves doing this kind of work so first and foremost uh they need us this is the bottom line of the whole entire construct they need us because as we said before the vital life force essence or the soul is unlimited it has no way to be shut down or wither out and die it's part of source it's part of creation and we can access this we can keep going we can energetically go as long as we need to they can't they run out of energy. And so the most important thing that I can really stress the hardest is do not give up. Do not give up because that's one. That's the major thing that they want you to do. That's the only thing that will allow them to gain control is if you give up and stop fighting against it. Stop ignoring the impulses. you know. And that right there is without the energy work. With the energy work – do not give up. That's the thing. We can always breathe in more energy. We can always give more. They can't. They have a finite amount that they have to expend in order to infiltrate you to cause you to turn dark so that they can feed and fill up their tanks again. If you can fend them off until they run out of gas, they're going to run off. Um, I personally don't like to let them run off. I either make them uh, convert back into source consciousness or I have them go restructure into the galactic central sun so that they can't go off and do this anymore. But, you know, this comes with experience and a lot of people just don't understand that anymore and they only feel what's happening inside of them and stuff pushing in. So what you want to do is push back out. Don't let things push into you. Fill up your body with golden light. Push out. You know, the... um. It's really hard to put words to this because there's really no explanation for it. But the way that you do the energy work and you move things inside of reality that are outside of the body is it's almost a knowing sensation that as I push here, it's going to move. It's confidence and understanding that you are an infinite reality creator. And when you push against something, it will move. But it's almost like you're setting yourself up against reality and you're just flexing your will. And you push backwards. You can feel them the way that they push in. Replicate that. Push back out. Don't let them get to you. And it's it's as simple as holding the light. Just hold on to it. Breathe deeply. Smile. Think about things that you enjoy. Send love to these things. They absolutely hate that. It really weakens them when they come into contact with love energy. You know, send that to them. You know, find the connections in your body. Find the uncomfortable points that are inside of yourself and send love and light to them. Send golden chi. Breathe energy through and really just keep yourself bright. The longer that you do this and the longer you keep it up, the more energy they're going to have to expend until they don't have any choice whatsoever but to leave. And that will upgrade you in and of itself because you have now fought off an attack on this level right here and you didn't really even know what was going on. It's going to expand your awareness and the next time you feel something, you're going to be 15, 16 times stronger than you were the time before. That's the way these things work is because you don't give up and you force yourself to go through it and get done and over with and just stand up in your own power 
and yell into the reality, this is not what I accept. I want to be free. And you step up and you do that and you gain levels. I mean, you, you literally increase your ability to handle so much more energy each time that you do this to the point that you end up like me. Anybody can do what I do. Anybody can do what I do. I am not uh, special, simple uh, for the fact that I can do all of this stuff. I came here to give this information out. There are many people who came to bring this information and uh, a lot of them got shut down and aren't able to do it. That's my purpose. That's what I'm here for. Anybody can do what I'm doing. That's why I am here to teach this. And, you know, like you said, you can come to me for a coaching session, but all of my stuff is online. You don't have to come to me and pay me money to learn this. Everything is already out there. And if you have the, uh, the ambition and the initiative enough on your own, you can research this and figure out how to do this on your own. And you never even have to meet me, talk to me. All you have to do is just hear this right here. And that's what this is all about because I don't want you guys to keep coming back to me. I want you guys to learn how to do this on your own because that's what this is about. I don't want to be the only person doing this. I can't do this on my own. I need millions of us standing shoulder to shoulder to explode this darkness into obliteration and step into where we're supposed to be. Well, the good news is, Eric, it's happened. <laughs> it has. It has. It has it's has exciting. Happened. It has happened. There are millions of us standing shoulder to shoulder, and we have literally caused a shift, a timeline shift on this mm -hmm. planet. And exponentially uh, time has grown faster and faster and faster to where it seems like the only way I can describe it is that we've connected with a future timeline where uh, earth is getting ready close I mean not tomorrow but close to connecting to, to, to allowing the connection to the new reality it's like it's like sandwiched right over us right now the mm -hmm. uh, connectors or whether you wormholes or tunnels or bridges, bridges is the best word, the bridges are now being activated and people are being able to, um, with their consciousness, travel to this new reality. Some people like my friend Emma, who's speaking in Seattle, has literally out in the forest walked through a doorway onto the new earth. So it's here. Wow, Magenta that is beautiful. Pixie has basically said we are on the new earth, but that's it, and that's true. It's just a matter of semantics. Yeah. But what are you tuning your reality? What are you still holding on to, to whether you are uh, able to tune your frequency to where to that to where that is? Now, eventually, I think that the earth will shift her frequency. And people will go, will scatter, and go wherever they need to go. On a soul mm -hmm. level, it's been decided. Their higher self already knows. They'll go to another planet. They'll go home to their spaceship. Or they'll spend some time on the new Earth and start a new way of living for humanity to experience life in a 3D body on, on a fifth-dimensional fifth plane. So we can be 3D and 5D at the same time, but we'll be more 5D than we will be 3D. Yeah, because the 3D body was just it's just really dense. It's really hard to carry around and it's hard to jump and fly and do all those fun things. So <laughs> um, isn't that the truth? Yeah. So this is unfolding um, in the times that we're in right now. Um, a lot of things have happened to bring this about the waves of energy um, that we talked about uh, last uh, September of 2015, the wave X energies. These are all like plasma energies that came to uh, raise the frequency, raise the vibration, accelerate things, um, get people more awakened, and then get people clearing themselves and ready to receive uh, the, I don't know, activations of what are happening right this moment to where we're literally connecting. Um, people are doing energy work right now to build these bridges and connect with this other reality it seems to me that that's the plan that we moved to that we will be changing the frequency for those who are, are uh, quote ascending unquote um to be able to experience this reality very soon um and do we're doing it whether we realize it or not um so everybody that's familiar with n5d knows that greg prescott has had this 
vision or this dream about three waves. A lot of people have had visions of waves. Some of them were tidal waves of water. I myself had a dream about the water, the tidal wave of water coming over me in the living room. I was not fearful. I was not drowning. There was no, it was nothing. It was just, it just happened. I just witnessed it. Well, Greg's um, vision or dream was that these two waves at once come from two different directions and converge in the middle. And <clears throat> the third wave is actually when he basically everything, he and everything around him were pure white light. So what we are trying to, you know, decipher from everything else that we've learned and everybody else's visions is that that third wave is when the earth actually shifts her frequency, uh, perhaps because we cause it we emanate or burst out and everything around the earth on the earth uh, is engulfed in this beautiful white light frequency which shifts us out of this reality and takes care of the dark they either if they haven't made a choice already to go you know be reconstituted or or to flip then they basically get burned up <laughs> you know their mm -hmm. energy just gets blasted so tell me um from what I've said, how can you relate to what you think is happening right now? So uh, this is actually really interesting. Um, this is pretty new information for me. This is within the past couple of days. Uh, I have a friend who I've been uh, teaching how to do implant removal for about a year now. And all of a sudden, the Facebook account was deactivated. I couldn't get a hold of her, and I didn't know what was going on. And so I texted her asking her what was going, uh, everything, what was happening, and she was in a really, really bad spot. And so I talked to her for a little bit, and I asked her if she wanted me to do some energy work on her, and she says, yeah. And so I go to tune into her, and my girlfriend, Sierra, she's uh, an incredibly gifted theta healer who I've been teaching this modality as well, and... Um, She's way better than I am, honestly. She's uh, pretty amazing at what she does. But um, she just kind of stops and cocks her head to the side, and she says, didn't we do this already? I said, what do you mean did we do this already? We haven't worked with uh, these guys for, you know, it's been almost seven or eight months now. And she says, no, we just did this like two weeks ago. I remember all four of us on Skype laughing together, and we set up a, a thing biweekly to clear each other out, you know, and help each other out as we're doing this. I said, no, this never happened, hon. And she says, but this isn't a deja vu. This is a memory. I know this happened. And so, like, when she said that, I was, like, starting to really tune into some really interesting energetic stuff happening. And so that really kind of tuned me into it. And I said, well, what happened? And so she started walking me through what I tuned into and how it was connected into this multidimensional uh, construct that was completely and totally m manipulating timelines and placing people in different uh, areas and like taking somebody who had made like a major breakthrough and then putting them in an alternate timeline where it didn't happen. And so this is what happened to all of us. And so as I tuned into it and I was going up and I found all of this, they were tracking me. And so they were able to reset the whole entire thing. And so she was the only one who remembered. And so as she was describing everything that I tuned into, she uh, was actually letting me see everything that was happening. And so I started from the top down. And so this had no warning this time. And so I did it the exact opposite way that I did that got us reset into the timeline. And as I got a hold of the top part and started moving down and deconstructing things, I got hit with a timeline attack that the only way I know how to describe it is that my equilibrium got pushed off to the side. Um, and I was energetically there doing all this stuff, and I've never had a push like that or such a complete and total shifting feeling or sensation before. And I recognized immediately what it was that they were shifting the timeline back. And so I froze it and I forced it back into place. And as soon as it got back into place, that's when everything shattered. Uh, the, the millions of parallel realities that this thing existed in, all of them shattered and all the pieces and construct, everything that was left over got immediately sucked back up to source. And that was when all of a sudden I had my paradigm stretched to a completely and totally new sensation. 
but now I recognize it and I can feel it. And so what we are, the way time is actually operating is like if we were to take a rope and snap it and have that wave go down the rope, that's kind of what we're on. We're riding that, riding that wave. And what happened was I was on that wave not recognizing I was moving forward on it. And then another wave came and tried to push me off to the side. And so what's happening now is I'm seeing all these timelines and convergences happening and up in front of us. So there's only two major possibilities for timeline uh, occurrence now and one of them is still the the negative timeline uh, well it's not really a negative timeline the lights already won no matter what no matter what we are going to be free of the parasitic construct we are going to be moving into the golden age but it's up to us when and where this actually happens and so the major timelines right now are catas cat catastrophic occurrences and then the major one that is easily about 80 to 85 percent of the possibilities with the, uh, the catastrophic timeline slowly shrinking more and more and more that we're in right now. Up in front of us, like you always hear stuff along the lines of like the lights already won, we're just playing out the roles. What I'm feeling right, right now for the very first time is a connection to that timeline. Everything is converging into one. This is why we're seeing these crazy Mandela effects happening where things don't exist the same way is because everything's getting forced into one timeline conduit and we're all going towards this goal right now. And the further and further time progresses, the further and further the awakening on the face of the planet's actually happening. And so what's going to happen is the source energy that's coming in, the, the 5D Earth that's already here, there's going to be a shift of the collective consciousness that's high enough to perceive that resonance. And that right there, that's the convergence. That's where everything is going to just shift because the collective consciousness is going to be aware of it all of a sudden, all at once, and that's the event. That's what we're talking about with these energetic waves that are coming in, these major activations, and I can see it now. I can feel it now, and what we have right now is actually an opportunity because right now we're pre-recording, but I can feel the timelines. I can feel the ripples, and I can feel the energy of things as they're happening, and right now as we're creating this moment in time, we have an opportunity for the collective consciousness to reach forward and make this happen even faster. So what I want to do is actually invite everybody listening later on, uh, wherever, whenever, it does not matter. The energy always adds up to the same place because time and space is an illusion. All that matters is the here and now. And so what I want everybody to do is to just go ahead and close your eyes. And just take a few deep relaxing breaths really breathe from the belly try to stay away from the chest breathing opening up the abdomen and relaxing it getting a nice sense of relaxation now up in front of us it's almost like we're in a tube and this tube is going to something incredibly brilliant. It's incredibly bright, incredibly powerful, and it feels like ringing bells of joy and ecstatic celebration. It's, it's an amazing sensation up there. And what we're going to do is collectively reach forward through this tube and grab a hold of this. And instead of it being so far away, we're going to pull this closer back towards us. And the closer you feel this slide, the brighter the vibration becomes inside of you. The more the chills run up your spine, the more the smiles just explode into the face. Look at that. It's right there. We literally just shifted this timeline so much closer right now. It's not far away. I can reach out and touch it now. And uh, we aren't the only ones, but you guys were a part of that. Thank you. That's absolutely beautiful and I really felt it and I know it's so close and people have been saying this for 20 years but what's been happening is these timeline shifts where they push us off um, some of the major players here being some of the major light workers who are aware and who are doing this work they push them off and so when one gets pushed off it pushes it's like a ripple effect across mm -hmm. and it gets everybody off so um, that's what's been happening, and I know that we have teams working on the other side. Every time the dark do something absolutely drastic and horrible like that, it, it allows our light team to move two steps forward. 
Mm-hmm. It's almost like a, a action reaction type thing where because of free will, we have to wait until they do something before we can uh, decide what we're going to do. And so it's been a waiting game of how bad are they going to fight and, and cut their own throats so that they can be reconstituted back to the light. And that's what's been happening. And it's been, it's been happening on a really fast level now. And um, we are starting a new phase on a new timeline, I believe, right now. Today's January 25th. It's um, 3.43 p.m. here, uh, Eastern Time. Uh, uh, 12.43 Pacific Time. So um, thank everybody that's listening to this for participating in that because... Um, It is very important that we come together as a group and intend what we want because we are co-creating this reality and they've only been able to do what they've done because they've tricked us into co-creating something else. We have created all of this. We have created implants. We have allowed this to happen from not knowing uh, what we were doing. Uh, Emotional scars, um, you know, being, they did kind of, trick us into reincarnating over and over again. And that's why they call it a prison planet. Um, because we, we said, yeah, hell yeah, I want to go back and fix that. When in fact there was nothing to fix. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are also time, timeline travelers. Those of us who are starseeds that are here to, to do this, this is what we're here to do now. What we're here to do now is to support each other, help, help balance the energy in everyone. Let's get these implants removed. Let's come together very, very strong and forceful. Um, We don't have a sword in our hand this time. What we have is information, knowing, and the ability to integrate our higher selves and pull that future timeline, that 5D Earth, into this reality now. And that's what's happening, and it has been happening. So I'm very excited to report that to everyone. This is something that... I literally would not have said a week ago. Hmm. Things have been moving incredibly quickly. Uh, Before, you know, everybody's saying it's close, it's close, it's close. That was energetically. We're actually seeing stuff happening in the world now. We're actually seeing major hits to the cabal, to the Illuminati. Their system is being dismantled as we speak. And it is a very interesting time to live in. A very interesting time. It is. Um, so, what do you think about this uh, this burst uh, this burst of light that we that when when we emanate it um, would that be what what you could call like another harmonic convergence? But um, this is like the shift. Uh, I don't know if it is the shift. I know it is a shift, and there's multiple shifts that are coming. After the major event frequencies that happen, because uh, like when the light explodes and this major shifting happens, there's still going to be much that has to be integrated on the planet. There's going to be a lot of completely and totally shocked consciousnesses that have no idea what's happening. So there is going to have to be a period of integration and healing of the collective consciousness, of removing the darkness on the planet, of facing it and overcoming it and dealing with it as a collective instead of just putting this underneath the rugs as the dreg- the dregs of society that nobody ever talks about. You know, we're going to have to be bringing all these things up to the surface because the energy is still here. And especially as a multidimensional consciousness, it's going to be even more pertinent. So we are going to be having multiple shifts as multiple resonances of the collective consciousness are hit. But the major one is this this emanation of source light from inside the prison that shatters the system. And look, the faster that we work on this, the faster the sooner. it will happen. I mean, mm-hmm. The sooner it will be I here. Check, as I check with my um, higher self and, and you know, use dowsing as a tool only to get, you know, specifics. I mean, I pretty much um, can use my intuition on certain things, whether something feels right or not. You know, at this moment, before we did this, before we did the meditation, I was looking at probably a year from now of of, uh, still doing phase one, phase two. Phase three, to me, in my mind, would be the shift. So it's no telling what we just did. We could have cut that in half. um, And I think it just, we have to stay 
uh, we have to stay working together and do little short meditations just like you did. You know, get in your group of people uh, because when you get two or more people together, it exponentially changes. It's the mm -hmm. dark. The dark doesn't work that way. You know, they they have to gang up several people, like twenty people to one. You get mm -hmm. two people together, and you can knock out you know a group of a hundred dark beings at once. So easily. That's the power that we have. So yep. Um, that it, that's that's amazing information. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I just have a quick couple of questions, and then we can you know wrap up anything else that you wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but what is the most bizarre removal that you've had? Ah, oh, geez. Um, some of the craziest stuff that I have ever come into contact with was a direct attack on myself. Um, so I, that's that's more dealing with like entities and stuff like that. Uh, like uh, you've looked into Corey Good, I'm sure. With mm -hmm. like he talks about the right right white royal Draco uh, reptilian lineage. Mm -hmm. I've been attacked by those guys before, and they are really no joke. Uh, he wasn't joking when he said that they are a very intense, intrusive, invasive astral presence, and it was um, it was a very, very intense experience for me that uh, further increased growth, I guess you could say, exponentially. So I'm kind of grateful for the attack and the fact that it made me much, much stronger than I could have been without it. But when this happened, it was the most draining, awful sensation that I've ever felt in my life. Like, um, I was actually awake at three or four in the morning. I'd woken up and I couldn't go back to sleep. And I was kind of looking for something to watch half in and out on Netflix. And um, I was starting to doze out. And then I felt something kind of like tap up against the side of my head. And I turned over and I see this white lizard face that's about the size of uh, my chest in front of me. And this was a physical thing that I actually saw with my wow. eyes. And it was, uh, it, it was disembodied. It was projecting itself there. But that was easily the craziest thing that I've had to, de uh, to deal with because that led me directly to the connection that the Archons have directly to the White Royal Dracos. And so I ended up getting attacked by Archons that night. And that was um, – it, it was a, a very intense experience. I saw stuff that I honestly can't describe and I wish that I'd never seen before because it just is it, – it's – they're so dark. They are so incredibly – evil and malevolent just being in contact with this type of a predatory consciousness on that level it's not something i want anybody else to have to deal with so that's why i'm here you know yeah. i know how to do it so i take care of the big stuff like that i'll teach everybody else how to do whatever and you know anybody else who wants to step up and start dealing with the the bigger energies that are invading in the, the planetary sphere you'll come into contact with some pretty crazy stuff too but the more experience you get the stronger you get you know it's one of those things it's trial by fire and, you know, we're going through the forge right now. We're, we are literally tuning into abilities and energies that we didn't know that we could access just even 50 years ago. So, I mean, this is, it's like baby steps. We woke up out of the coma and now we're going to run a marathon. So we're kind of learning how to do this all on the fly. And it's not an easy process, but it's well worth doing. You know, this is the only thing that is worth doing in this reality right now. This is true light work. This is finding the true darkness and turning it into light. You know, this is what it's all about right here. Well, and it's exciting and it's not for everyone. And no, it's so, not. It's you not. Know, but I do know, I, I do know a friend of ours who we're about to bring out. He's about to come out. <laughs> yeah, I and, can't wait. Uh, for that. You know, when, when two, when two or more of these powerful beings that are people who are standing in their power and, and know who they are on another level and have, you know, you've done this before. Not only have you done this before, like I think you've done it on, I think, you know, some of us did this already and came, or came back and yeah. inserted ourselves to make things a little bit easier on everyone else. We've learned so much. And so we, timeline travelers, we came back. But not only have we done it here before, but we also have done it on other planets. And we've come yeah. up against these beings before other places mm -hmm. several times. And This isn't our first rodeo. We're the systems no. busters for a reason. And we've kind of forgotten, but we're learning, uh, mm -hmm. relearning. And uh, it's amazing that they have balls enough to come back up to us uh, because especially at this time when we're becoming uh, so powerful by coming together. Um, and, and in a way, like you said, Eric, though, 
these everything comes from source. And so what they're doing is playing their role and they're, they're getting you to become more powerful and, and helping humanity um, by being their little dark, nasty selves. So, well, I've, I've learned so much from these systems that, you know, I, I can't deny that whatsoever. They're not here for the betterment of humanity, but I can't deny the level of information that I've learned because of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay. So awesome. So, uh, I guess one last question I have is there's this, there's been these discoveries and this acknowledgement of um, a new etheric way of, of air having water in it. Mm -hmm. Have you gone down this rabbit hole yet? The I have, I have water. never heard anything along <laughs> those lines before, but I'll tell you right now, when you said etheric way of air having water in it, something pinged really hard. I need to look <laughs> into that. <laughs> Huh. Well, um, very interesting. Yes. When I went to Finland to the conference where I met Emma, Louise Living Soul, who's going to be in Seattle, one of our speakers, um, the whole conference was geared around, uh, we didn't know it at the time, but everything came started to come up water. Um, the importance of water, how water holds consciousness. And mm -hmm. Gerald um, uh, Pollard or Pollack, I have to look up his name. He... Um, he talked about the fourth phase of water, um, and so if and that means that um, there's ice, there's liquid water, there's vapor, but there's a fourth phase as well, and they're studying that. And so it seems that our air, you know, it does carry water. Well, if our air has water in it, and it it can hold, uh, Dr. Emoto has shown how it can hold consciousness and be programmed. Then um, can't we, you know? Basically, it opens up all new kinds of questions. Well, can we program the air to hold consciousness and to change? You know, and the and if we're all connected, if we're all connected through air, and we all have water in our bodies, you know, I think this is kind of like showing how um, we are shifting our frequency, how we can shift our frequency through um, convergence and harmonics by uh, us raising our frequency, it will affect everyone around us. So anyway, check into this and we, you know, we, we you, you know, this more. I, I actually have some information on this because of some of the other stuff that I deal with. Um, I make uh, cloud busters and plasterite and uh, water generators like uh, G2 water towers and stuff like that. Things that actually generate um, moisture and uh, things because I was living in California during the worst of the drought and I was looking at ways to generate uh, rain and so this is the stuff that I was making and experimenting with and there was a bubble of about 150 miles around my town in Roseville that I could interact with consciously because of the uh, energetic devices that I was placing everywhere around like cell towers and in, uh, in the water and stuff like that and that's really interesting that you say that because even if you're not inside of an organ canopy or anything that's generating a high frequency organ um, field, you can transmute chemtrails by looking at them and telling them, no, I don't accept your reality and I am canceling you out. And then, you know, just kind of making a motion like you're wiping them out of the sky with like a chalkboard. You're wiping something off of a chalkboard mm -hmm. and you can literally make the chemtrails inert and dissolve right then and there. Um, and anybody can do this. You just have to believe that you can do that. And that really, that makes sense. That's really hitting on something with me with the water in the air because the water is incredibly powerful. Uh, with the consciousness that we can program into water and then ingest this and make it part of our own internal universe, you know, there's multiple ways that you could go about looking at how to program everything around you with the consciousness. That's really interesting. I'm going to have to look a lot more into that. That's, um, that definitely sounds like something I'm going to end up writing an article about, actually. Well, if you can make it to the Out of This World Conference, Ted Mars Conference, which is the weekend before our conference. Yeah, um, which is one of the main reasons I decided to go to Seattle in the first place and have our conference. Um, you're going to hear a lot about a lot of interesting stuff about water. Why do you think that there's been this drought over California that was engineered? And why do you think that we have this standing rock situation going on? Yeah, um, you know they're they're trying to keep water from us. They're trying yeah. to control water. Water is the new money. Water is the new energy. Water is the new everything. So we've got to be on top of this with the water situation, and we've got to figure out how we're going to be using water, not using it, but working with water to spread the higher consciousness and 
um, program it just like a crystal program touch the, the water yeah and yeah. touch the water clean the of course you know we can uh, the dr emoto's team is using um crystals programming crystals to put it in the pacific ocean and um take care of the, the radiation uh that's the, beautiful that's coming from fukushima still so you well, know, you know, you think about it, we should have been fried like two years ago exactly. for the amount of radiation coming through. It, all of the West Coast. The yeah, Pacific, the whole entire West yeah, Coast. Because it's it's come, you know, for years now, come across. So Yeah, uh, 2010. Yeah, people taking care of that, that's proof. And you'll hear a lot more about water and the importance of water at that conference, at Ted Mars conference, if you go to that. So lots of the same people that spoke at the Finland concert co conference will be at that conference. And... Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Yeah, Indeed. Ted's a good friend. I really like that guy. He's yeah. a, a very unique individual doing exactly what he's here for. So everybody come join us in March. Just come the whole week. Go to yeah. that conference. Come to our conference. Meet up and let's have a big family reunion. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, Eric, um, so could you please describe um, your website name again? Okay. Um, so... I have Unleashing Natural Humanity on Facebook. That's my Facebook page. Uh, you can look that up. There's a group and a page. Uh, you can like one, join the other one. You can actually interact with people who have had this process done and are experiencing uh, things along their lives and you know techniques they're learning and things that you can share with. Uh, it's, it's really nice to have a community when you're dealing with these subjects because honestly, how are you going to talk to people who are stuck in the matrix about this? They're going to think you're crazy. And, um, you know, that, that's despite the fact that you can pull these things out and show them that the symptoms are all of a sudden gone. But, you know, it's kind of hard to broach that subject there. But it's nice to have a, a community there that's Unleashing Natural Humanity. The website is UnleashingNaturalHumanity.com. Uh, the YouTube channel is Eric Pilgrim. And I've got a few meditations and some Q&A videos on uh, that right there. So that'll definitely help out anybody who's looking for more information. Perfect. Perfect. Go to n5devents.com to find out more information about the conference that I'm holding that Eric is going to be speaking at. So thank you so much for joining me today. We, we have so much work to do together in the future. It's so exciting. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, well thank until you for then, having me. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Have a good rest of your day. All right. Have a good one, Michelle. Okay. Bye, bye. for now. Bye-bye.